What's how happening? Are how are you, sir? Uh, I'm trying to coach our guests in through this crazy system. Um, you know what, guys? We're having technical difficulties. We apologize for the inconvenience, by. but it's always something. It never seems to just be easy peasy breezy. But we thank you for being with us. We thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. How, how's your week been? How's your week been? I know my week. I'll tell you. I'll, while you're doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about my week. Um, I traveled last weekend, went to a celebration, was epic, great celebration, got to see lots of family, very, very happy with that, uh, came back and then worked and 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 had a lot of cases. And last night, uh, my team and I went to investigation and, um, it was pretty active. There was a lot of stuff going on. The people were quite haunted. I, I would tend to think that it was more the people that were haunted than the location, but but because it had followed them around to different houses um it was really mentally affecting these people like really mentally affecting them to the point that um you know um it was bad like uh, you know they were they were actually you know getting angry for no reason getting sad for no reason getting all of these things so not good no yeah. no we we did a um we did a uh in a residential investigation on a request of a family uh friday last and uh i have a, i have a test because you and i have been through this kind of stuff before with families right god love them right they're going through some stuff and um i wanted to know because i kind of felt like they had attachments father 17 yeah. year old son you can feel it when you walk in the room so I had this little test I do. Mm -hmm. Is it you or is it the house? <clears throat> so before you leave, I run a small EVP session. How much activity do I get while you're there? And then you leave and I ask the exact same style yeah. of question. Yeah. And based well, on the response, it kind of tells me a little bit besides how I feel. Yeah, no, agreed. So actually, uh, they, a couple, a few of my team members actually removed them from the home. They went out, took a break outside for a little while, and I sat in the home um, and just kind of, I had my, my task cam on. I just sat and listened. I asked a few questions. I got growling. I got, like, it was, it definitely didn't like mm -hmm. us. It was, there's no scratching or biting. However, there was some pushiness, and it was really emotionally affecting the family, like, to to a ninth degree the emf is going up to over 200 there was there was hits of over 100 there were hits of in the 30s 70s oh yeah that's like it crazy. was crazy and that's that's like down to a finite we had a k2 going but we also had the the melmeter going and it was like it was pretty good we got we had uh through a spirit box we had growling not only on an evp but through it you know, and it's it's sad because you don't really want it to be the family. For me, I don't because then there's a list of, you know, things you got to go through from there to kind of cleanse the thing out. And, you know, and, and this came up, I mean, when we cleansed the house after they left, we cleansed the house, I saged them, but the father and the son both have attachments on them. And, you know, my recommendation was after the saging that immediately getting back, they need to do a salt bath and they need to. You know, do that with the um, commitment that they want to make to themselves to cleanse the issue. And uh, I, we got, she got back with her husband. Came back the next morning, and I sent him a message out on Monday. This is Friday when we did it. Monday, <clears throat> and I said, "Hey, just want to check and see how things are going." And I said, "When we left there, you could. It's like somebody turned every light on in the house." She's, yeah, I feel like that Friday night when I got home and all day Saturday. But, you know, when when my husband and my son, stepson came home, it's right? so creepy again. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't slow down. Honest to God, it doesn't slow down. 
Welcome yeah. everybody who's just joining us. Thank you for, for coming in with us. As you all know, we sign you cast and we do it on multiple networks. So therefore I may not be able to see all your questions, but Richard can. So if there's something specific, I am not ignoring you. You're seeing me looking down because I've got multiple screens going at once. Okay, so please be patient with us. You know, we're gonna have a wonderful lady coming in, but if you have questions, do not hesitate to put them up on the board. We don't know you're here unless you say hello. Hello. Don't be mean. <laughs> I will ban your butt in a second from the show. No, I'm just kidding. We never really, we've had that problem once in three years. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Amory, Brenda, Ellen, how's it going? Yeah. Welcome Joanne, you. Tara, Wild Bill, Diana, and Adam, Herbie, Robin. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Appreciate you being out. Okay. Um, I, I, I will tell you that, you know, we had um, a gentleman on here not too long ago, uh, by the name of Greg Lafon Boy. Uh, he was here from Canada. Phenomenal crystal guy. I call him the crystal guru. I mean, he's he's great. Uh, for the folks living in Canada, for shipping and buying stuff from us, great. We, I figured I wanted to bring in somebody I know that could represent that style of stuff in the U.S., because um, I'm actually wearing and, or brandishing, if you would, um, black tourmaline and selenite that um, Michelle made for us. Um, it's, it's, she's really good with the prices, really comfortable in the price point. They are they're really beautiful pieces of jewelry. But I've really gotten so much into the crystal portion of protection and things like that. That's your fault. Sorry. Sorry. You over there? Yeah. You? That's your fault. Um, and I and I will tell you, I've got uh, smoky quartz for the wife. Um, she got quartz as well from uh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we just you know we really just try to put on as many many opportunities of protection as we can. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, can I just jump in for one second because we got, wonderful, we got the wonderful Lori in here in the chat room. And I think really quickly you should kind of jump in. She said there's only three tickets left to Octagon Hall. You only got three tickets left, Richard? Yeah, we're down to the last three. We're down to six days. Um, oh you know, we, we kind of threw kind of threw through it the problem in this market in the u.s is that a lot of people like to start throwing out events at the same time and it takes away a lot of focus on the number one number two octagon hall if you have never been and someday you need to get your butt down here rub it um, in rub it in richard rubbing it in that's right <laughs> rub it in yeah. Uh, yeah i mean octagon hall is probably one of the craziest places i have ever been all kinds of activity in this place never fails we've got the cemetery the slave cemetery we've got the outside bar and the actual octagon hall that was octagon in its word is shaped in eight different sides yeah um it was controlled and commanded by the uh, rebel forces for quite a long time during the war civil war um we've had some evp work happen through uh, finding out that the instead of them calling them um, Union soldiers in the U.S., they were addressed back then as federal soldiers. So for those of you that are investigating Civil War era places, um, yeah. there's a little hint for you because that is a trigger. The correct word was federal soldiers, uh, not Union. So uh, really great opportunity. We only have three tickets left. It is from 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. Central to 1130-ish. I never end on time. I never do. 1130-ish. Uh, and, um, you know, we've got three different floors. Huh? Oh, I'm, sa I'm saying hi. I'm shouting out while you're talking. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, three different floors. Uh, and again, a slave cemetery, family cemetery, just insane stuff. The grounds have had photos of apparitions crossing the grounds. Uh, the place holds elementals. Um, 
it, it, it holds all kinds of activity. Uh, creatures I can't even describe. So, well, guys, three uh, tickets left, and it goes to such three. a good cause. It all goes back to the building. It all goes, you know, if I could be there, I would be there. You know that. You know, yeah. but one of these no, days we're going to get, yeah, we're going to get something going where we can both get in there and do what we got to do. Because he's oh, very yeah, excited. Yeah. Yeah, we we got to get it done. You know, the the Octagon Hall really deserves the uh, the revenue that it'll get from this. It's a great place, beautiful place. Actually, has a bathroom that works. Wow. <laughs> heat conditioning and air and air, heat and air conditioning as well. Uh, plenty of places to sit down and rest if you need to while you're investigating with us. We will take those who are novices at this and just want to learn better, learn better, learn correctly. We will take those and we will teach you. If you are an established paranormal investigator, come on out and investigate the way you want to. That's fine. But for those that are new to this, this is a grand opportunity to be able to learn how to correctly investigate at a phenomenal building that has been on so many different television shows. You really okay. need to come out. If you don't, um, if you don't know enough or you want to learn more, reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, we have another event going on the 1st of April, the Walking Horse Hotel. Um, and it is called, the event's called The Last Ride because we will be the last paranormal investigation ever done in a building. The new owners want nothing to do with the paranormal. They will not allow it. So we will be the last paranormal event ever in that building. Catch up on that one as well. Guys, I put the uh, link for the Haunted Travelers where you can get those tickets. I put Are them in the comments. Uh, so yes. check them out. And you know what? If you're curious, even if you don't want to buy tickets, but you're curious, you want to see what it's about, have a look because there's some wicked pictures and the link is in the, in the uh, comments. So go go in and check it out. And then you said, are there any cornfields? Yes, it is surrounded by cornfields um, and things like that and, and even livestock. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, think. guys. Well, I think we've. Yep, I think we've done it. I think we've covered the basis. What do you think about time to bring on our guests? I think we should. So this woman is a crystal groover herself. She's a Reiki master. She is well versed in the ways of crystal healing and how to do the energy work. Let's bring her in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Mitchell. There she hey. is. Now let me see hey, if I can Michelle, walk welcome. you over. Thank yes, you. Hey, there we go. I did it right. Yeah. You're in Thanks the middle. so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. My setup's a little crazy. My computer is having issues, so I apologize in advance. Okay. You look fabulous. That's all that counts, right? Yeah, you look you fabulous. Look you look like you own it. That's a good. That's good. Thank you. You guys look amazing. Right what happened? I'm a little outnumbered right now, but I'll just go ahead and take it on the chin. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you see, I'm donning some of your stuff. I love it. Yay. Thank you. Not a problem. Not a problem. And I will tell you, me personally, and Katie will back me up on this, because she has hounded me about looking at crystals for a long time. And I'm a little bit of a junkie, your... Michelle. I'm a little bit of a junkie. I've yeah, got, you're a little I've bit got, of a junkie. I... Yeah. You know, there might be a support group for that. I don't know. But you're <laughs> like it. You never know. Richard, uh, I run one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have one too. Yeah. There you go. Um, but yeah, it, I got into it mostly because of her. Um, and, uh, you know, we brought the, the guy Greg on. I don't know if you saw that show or, or knew of it, uh, Michelle. But man, this guy, I, I think he has forgotten more than i'll ever remember that's how much he knew about it and that's what kind of turned my head into this and then i was getting stuff from you i was getting you know necklaces jewelry stones from you crystals from you and i'm like yeah we need to do this because the, the canadian folks and we have a lot of canadian viewers on the show um you know they can go to greg and you know they can get their stuff shipped and it doesn't kill you uh, going from Canada to the U.S. is like going from the U.K. to the U.S. It's pretty crazy on cost. So having you on board, you know, not only to talk about your AK Master uh, and what you do with that, but also, too, again, about the crystals that you do 
and what you offer and what maybe they mean individually, what you got. Now, I've got uh, black tourmaline and I've got selenite. Um, now, the wife the boss, um, has, uh, you know, the, the quartz and all that that you sent over and selenite and black tourmaline. I mean, she's got it all now. She looks like the Imelda Marcos of crystal jewelry. But, um, yeah. So we've gotten it, and it's 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 helped that a lot. I was I had I honestly I had boohooed it, Michelle. I had boohooed it for years. I've been in, in the paranormal twenty six years. I had boohooed it because I'm a I'm a man, you know. It'll be that kind. Of, and I was doing that. I was carrying that attitude for a long period of time until again, what she had planted in my ears, what Greg had planted in my ears, and what I got from you as well kind of pulled it all together so let's talk about this start jump right into it let's talk about your background with crystal work talk to okay. us about that all right so i'll start by saying um at a very young age like maybe around three or four years old i used to meet my best friend outside and we would go meet at this tree and we would get our hammer and our chisel and we would go to the sidewalk and he would chisel crystals out of the sidewalk and we would be like oh my god these little treasures are so cool and like we were just we would hold them in our hands and we would sit in the grass uh, you know then as we got older we would have conversations and start saying like where did nothing come from you know or like just different things or talking about aliens or it just now that i'm looking back at that time i didn't realize what was opening me up but just as simple as you know a stone from a ground has just as much energy from a stone from my shop so you know you don't necessarily have to even purchase uh you know a crystal to have an amazing experience with nature um yeah. so that's kind of that's when like i my passion for stones um kind of ignited within me and so when I was young, I would see like injured bugs or animals and I'd pick them up and I'd be like, I love you so much. And and they would they would be OK or they would come back to life. And for me, this was completely normal um, until I got older and I noticed my friends weren't uh, picking up injured animals and yeah. bugs and and healing them. And I'm like, OK, so there's definitely something different about me. Um, right. I used to see orbs all over the place um, and have like different spiritual experiences. I'm also clairvoyant. And oh, um, the club. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a whole welcome other story. Yeah. So, um, so I was, um, I was always like a naturally born healer. And then I would say actually here in 2014, I don't know if you guys can see. So I actually, I went to, well, let me start with this. Um, maybe around in my late teens or early 20s, I had carpal tunnel syndrome in my hand. So I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, you're going to have to get surgery, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I don't want to get surgery. So I went to like a nutrition store and I saw this hematite bracelet in there. And it said it was good for pain and healing. And, you know, I've always been into stones and it, even though I knew they made me feel something, I didn't realize like that they actually had healing properties that other humans weren't aware of. So I, I bought this bracelet and I wore it every single day. And maybe a week later, completely no pain. I've, I've never had problems ever since. So that's what kind of inspired me. And I was like, oh, well, if someone else is doing this, then, then I can make jewelry to heal people too. So I started like a small business with my best friend, Corey, the one that we used to chisel the stones out the sidewalk. Um, and it was called Crystal's Rock. And like, I started making jewelry and then I kind of stopped for a couple of years. I, I went through a lot of trauma and different things in my life, which love and, and crystals have always kept me grounded during those times through the good and, and the bad. Um, so then as I got older, I realized I'm like, how can I explain to other humans like that I'm able to heal people because, you know, people who don't understand, they fear the unknown. 
just like the the topic of the show paranormal oh everybody's scared you know like oh there's something you know something creepy or weird or this and that where i when i talked to richard i had a better understanding and understand it's all energy there's just different levels of vibrations and dimensions of it and i i just had so much respect that you guys do what you do and bring peace and love um into different environments that that crave it so back to um me meeting my reiki master so i went to a crystal store one day and i saw they had these classes so i was like oh a drumming circle that's you know i never did anything like that so i was like okay i'm going to this drumming circle so I go, and then I met this guy. His name's Joseph Stan. Um, he's also a saxophone player and a Reiki master and a shaman. And um, I made an appointment with him because I wanted to experience, you know, what Reiki was. Although I had a feeling it was what I already did, but didn't completely understand that there's different words to try to describe different things from different people's perceptions. So although I'm a Reiki master, that's just one word to describe something um, that other people can relate to. So I went to go meet him and, you know, I went to, to have my session and I was telling him about my gifts and how, why I was interested and not that I needed anything specifically healed. I just wanted to see what Reiki was and, and how it works. And he's like, put your hand on my knee. So I put my hand on his knee and he had, he had arthritis and all, you know, although he's a Reiki master and a shaman, I mean, you, I'm sure you guys, I can sense you guys are healers on some level. It's a little different when it comes to healing yourself, especially because we take on so much and then we have to process and, and, and remove them. So I put my hand on his leg and about five minutes later, he, had completely no pain and he's arthritis has been completely gone ever since. So he gave me my money back and he told me there's no way that I'm paying him. Um, and that he wanted to happily work with me and, and certify me for free. So yeah. it was like such an amazing, like I was so grateful, like such an amazing experience. Like I don't necessarily, would say I went through the same process that maybe others have been through um, getting certified being a Reiki master because this was already a natural born gift for me. Right. So um, it, it was a little different. I, I don't, I can't really explain the experience the way other people may go through it, which I'm sure everybody has, you know, different experience anyway. Right. But um, so, it's... So let me ask you, let me ask you, Michelle, for those of you that okay. don't know what Reiki is in our audience, can you kind of give a little bit of a background and explain what Reiki is and how it's done so that people can kind of, we've got some intrigue in the audience. So I'd love to kind of narrow it down so, you know, they understand a little bit better. Yeah, we Absolutely. have a very interactive audience. So like I will pull up questions like you see in front of your screen now, and we've got about nine. So right. I love questions. Yeah. So if you see me go like this, that, that just means I want to bring a question up from the audience. But go ahead and explain it. If you don't mind our audience, as Katie had asked, because yeah. that's just one question here anyway. Absolutely. So, it, and I may be saying this wrong. It's Yusai Shiko Regio. Am I saying it right, Katie? Yeah. Yes. Katie, so, okay. Katie, on paranormal Wikipedia. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, right, right. Now, everyone can look it up. But so I'm going to read to you guys what's on here just so you can have an understanding of what this says. So it says, Michelle Mitchell has attained knowledge of the symbolic language and final initiations in the Reiki method of natural healing, the title and all rights and privileges of Reiki master, teacher, level practitioner with the full mastery level energy and the ability to teach and hereby granted. So the best way I can explain it is it's unlimited universal life force energy is the best way I can possibly describe it. So Reiki, some people may call Reiki key. Some people may call it chi. Some people may call it love, universe, God, Buddha, 
it, it's it all everything is perception i always explain to people hello is hello in english it's a totally different word in a thousand different languages so which one is it it it's how we perceive it so for me reiki again is um how i perceive reiki is unconditional love to make it very simple okay now jen and, and, who asked the first question she said um how do you build clients how do i build clients okay so let me start by saying this as far as reiki is concerned um i've met i have done a business but i have never charged. I only take it for donations. I personally do not feel comfortable um, not healing somebody because they cannot afford to pay me. And that's just my preference. Um, and it ended up working out great. I, I made really good money. Like it somehow worked its way out. Like I was able to heal the people that couldn't afford it. And the people who could somehow were just very generous and it, I did very well and I was so happy to help people. Um, and as far as my jewelry, um, it's pretty amazing. So like my goal with Reiki is not to get clients, just to be clear with everyone. I'm happy to help and heal mm -hmm. anybody at any time, absolutely for free. Like I'm just, I, of course, you know, with balance, I have to balance everything, but I'm, I'm always here and I'm always available if anybody needs motivation or guidance or if there's any questions or if if you want me to send you reiki or a loved one please feel free to contact me at any time um what? and as far as my jewelry i i i still remember my first sale was my best friend i'm like can you buy uh one of my pieces and give me some feedback so like i i can still remember that and now i have i think over two thousand sales within like a year which is you know pretty amazing and that's just my one of my online stores i'd have to check my other one um but as far as clients i just i i'm genuine and i make sure that my i don't call them customers i call them my soul family i make sure that they have a good experience i pretty much give everybody free gifts all the time uh, yes, you do. because I'm happy because I'm getting, I give things away for free anyway. So I'm like, if someone's paying then I'm definitely giving something away for free. Well, the thing I, so, I think I will tell you in that, in that operating principle, right? <clears throat> Katie does readings that for a living, right? But I can guarantee you, and I know this for a fact, that if somebody came to her and said, I'm really in desperate need, can you please read this? Even if they didn't have money, she's still gonna do it. I'm the same way. I don't I don't charge for readings either. I I don't, you know, people need that kind of help and, and clarity and, and answers. I'll do my best to give it to them. But you know, to me it's a matter of give and take. I think what you put into the universe you get back, right? So I think when we do this stuff to help people, you know, I, I think that'll that'll come back to you. That's that's karma coming back at you. Absolutely. Yeah. Always, yeah. Well, energy is supposed to be for sharing. Energy is supposed to be not only is it for healing, but it's for teaching purposes. And, you know, even doing readings, it's not for selfish acts. You know, I don't get the lottery numbers. I don't get it. You know, it's not selfishness where I can if read you these things. Share. <laughs> it's about helping others and giving back to others. So I think if you're going in it with integrity and honesty and purity um, and, and trying to assist others, that's how it works. I haven't, I have advertised twice in seven years in, in my life. I put two advertisements up. Everybody comes to me and I say that humbly because I put it out to the universe that I'm there at a vibration that when people need me, they will reach out to me. And I feel that it works that way because it's about that honesty and integrity. And I feel that Jen, maybe to answer your question a little bit, if you really work on that manifestation that you want to put yourself and cite yourself at that vibration, to assist others, you're going to be getting those people coming in. And, and I think with you, Michelle, that's be, that's essentially what you're doing is that you're setting that love vibration and people are coming to you, that wounded bird is coming to you for that that assistance. So it just goes to show how vibrations are successful, right? Yes, and a yeah. lot of them are re re like repetitive customers too. Like they're, yeah. and again, I don't like, I do not really like to call them customers, but just 
it's a word that people understand. I've also created like a Facebook group um, called Hearts of Healing. I, I added you, um, Richard. Um, so it's just like a support group, like for anybody who's into energy and like-minded people, there's really no other um, like objective other than just to keep us all like connected. Um, so that, that was something that I set up. Not, and again, not to sell my jewelry, but to have a support group of like-minded people. And that's what's so cool too. Like with, when I met Richard and he messaged me and I believe that was my eBay store. I have an Etsy store and an eBay mm -hmm. store. And he was telling me he, he needed protection and he does paranormal activity. And it's been quite a while actually, right? Yeah. And um, I just, it was just like an immediate connection. I'm like, oh, I'm happy to help you. Like, thank you so much for, for doing what you do. Like it's, and it's all my customers. Like I've never had one return, which I think is absolutely amazing. Like to be able to say that I've never had a bad, um, you know, bad review or anything like that. You know, another thing is like, if anybody has an issue or even if their uh, wire gets, you know, faded or something like that, they can, ha I will happily, someone can send it back to me and I will happily rewrap it for free and, and ship it back at no charge. Mm -hmm. Like I take pride in, in the crystals and they mean a lot to me and I feel so connected to them and every single family or owner that they're with that I, I appreciate that they want to hold on to that energy and not just, you know, if something gets messed up, you just don't put it on anymore. But the people that have these crystals are so connected to them. And it's, it literally, it makes me so happy, like to, to know that they're healing and like to hear like people's stories and get messages and calls from people. I'm just, so grateful like i'm i and i love what i do i literally cannot stop making jewelry <laughs> well you know it's it's funny because you know for example the mm, lady over there next to you all right um we've known each other what, it's six <laughs> years it's about six years five think, years now. yeah yeah she is like my sister seriously we've never met Not never wow. met yeah, never had really physical good. contact, never met. Yeah. Someday, you know, when when the hell freezes over, probably because she's in Canada. But um, <laughs> that won't you know, be long, connection, right? <laughs> well, you get that kind of connection with people you work with, you know. So, right. but I had a, a funny question just come up, Ellen. God, I love you, Ellen. Um, she asked if you were from Tennessee, Georgia area. Michelle, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can you say the word customer? Customer? Customer. That's not a Tennessee, Georgia accent. That's a Jersey accent, okay? Customer. That's a Jersey People accent. Just, the other day, someone told me I have a New York accent. Somebody said Cali. I said, I have no clue. Well, no, you're, you're close to New York, New Jersey on that line. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's where she's from. Ellen, Ellen is a great, a great uh, fan of the show and, and a great lady coming out to all the tours we've done and everything, so um Good. now nadine i think we covered this but i want to make sure we have where does the word reiki come from it's it's an old I, I i have been told it's an it's an ancient art of energy work and that's where it kind of came from kind of like a labrador is a black labrador uh it's just a name that as michelle explained earlier it's a name that we that people have put on it to kind of give it a branding type thing but there's yeah. so many different variations of energy work. You couldn't label it under just one thing. It's impossible. So, yeah, but hopefully that answers your uh, your question, Nadine. Now, let me see where we at. Because we had a lot of people. And it, it also originates in Japan, if anyone's interested in that. Yeah, okay. I think it's it was I think it's Buddhist. I think, and it was it was back to Buddhism, like close to Buddhism, because there's very different different variations. And the Uso or Usti, I should say is Japanese, right? That's the one that you're referring to is it kind of originated back in the early, I think, late 1800s or early 1900s, I, I believe. And I think we, you've already touched on this a little bit with your background, but Nadine also said, have you always known you were a healer just by being around people? Like, did you begin to notice others become happier, feel better when you were around? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, even to this day, like even if people, like people who can, you know, sometimes when you message people, you can't really get a feel. People can sense how much of a like kind, loving people pleaser I am. And I'm, I'm saying that in a very like non egotistical way. I just literally can't help it. Like I, I, I won't say that I was aware. Um, I just thought it was normal. And I mean, I'll be honest, I'm still kind of in denial. Like I really hope and want everyone to be kind and loving and nice. And I do live in somewhat of like this little love bubble. I don't really watch TV. Like I just kind of consume all the energies that I, that I want that make me feel good and happy and high vibrational. So I guess I would say I, I just, we only know what we know. So right. for me, it's just, it's normal. But like I said, as I got older and I saw that other people weren't doing the same things, that's probably when I realized, okay, there's something different about me. But I well, never- Well, people always told me I've been very different too, but not for the same reason. Right, right. But it's like, you know- That was <laughs> Right. Go. Most people block it when they start feeling like they're different. I never really went through that period. There's times where I block it because I'm overwhelmed with like human worldly stuff. And then I got other stuff going on. But other than that, it's, I'm, I always really embraced who I am and, and yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So now Ellen just said, I just got a box yesterday with selenite, a selenite sphere. Super 7, Fluoride, et cetera. I wish we had a crystal shop close. Well, Jersey isn't that far away. And that's where Michelle's from. And you can reach out to her store. If you could um, reach out to me with a link to your site. Sure. Um, I'd like to have people be able to take a look at it. Um, the good thing, you know, guys, here's my problem. And I've experienced this. I'm just going to be very honest. I'm liable will catch some heat on this, but that's okay. Um, I'm used to it. I'm good. Uh, there are a lot of shops around. Um, the legitimacy of what they're selling is my concern. And, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that. Um, you know, I, I get my stuff from Michelle because it. I know it works. I know it's legit. And I know the energy and the love behind it when she sends it. And that's really one thing, because you can go out and buy a pound of, of rocks, okay? You can do that. But to me, this with this methodology of, of energy work, there's a connection that follows. There's a connection that, that follows, that, that charges the crystals as well. And you don't get that, buying them off a warehouse site or buying them all out of a box somewhere in a store because somebody had you know, labradite laying around and, you know, to me, this is a better way to do it. Uh, I have appreciated um, the items that I've gotten from Michelle and, um, you know, her and I have had many honest, candid conversations about the stuff and, and about what she does and, and what it does for our team. And, you know, she's kind of worked with us on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there are shops out there. There's a shop in Chattanooga, Ellen. Um, and also if this anything that somebody needs that's not in my store, I will happily, you know, find it and, you know, something real and authentic, whatever it is that you're looking for. So if you can't get to a crystal store and there's something you need, if there's something I don't have, I will find a way to get it for you. There yeah. you go. That was so Stephanie how would you, your horse tickets. Right. How would you um going into crystals, how do you uh discover decipher and decide which crystals d are necessary for what you're using so you know the to the average joe they're going to walk up and see a piece of something and they're going to not know what it is or they're going to go why is it this one and not this one how do you uh explain to the to the client to the to the person um what okay. what they should be using and how they should be using it okay sure um so like i have I have so many things and I'm going to show you guys jewelry too. Um, there's 
so I always explain to people, you can go online and you can Google and you can search the healing properties of each specific stone, which I know the majority of them. But, and this is, so I, I wanted to start off this show actually by saying, whatever I say, um, I would, I want people to look within and ask themselves within what resonates with them or not. And if there's anything that I say that doesn't resonate with you, I want you to put it in one ear and out the other. So I'm not here to like push any views or sales or anything like that. I'm genuinely, genuinely like super excited to be able to like share my passion with one of my soul family members and now my other soul family member who I'm sending you a whole bunch of stuff, by the way. Um, and I, so I let the, the crystal speak to me. I don't, so say that they say, okay, well, smoky quartz is good for anxiety and depression, which it is. But in my experience, I can put that intent into any of my crystals and I'm going to get the same results. Now that's just my opinion and my experience. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but how I try to explain to people is like, so I have like this crystal book of, of I just did an event of all the crystals with their properties, you know, just to kind of give people a guide. But again, these just like words are perceptions that somebody thought this is one person's experience and then someone else believed it and then another person, and then it became, okay, this is what this crystal means. Now, yes, they, they do vibrate on different levels and different frequencies, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's limited to certain properties with one stone and limited to other properties with another stone. So my, my advice is to always use your intuition when you are looking for a crystal for a specific healing, trust your intuition. Another thing that you can do and I wanted to show everybody so this is like a way for me to desensitize my hands in a way like physically and i'll do this and it you guys can do this at home this is something that you can practice to learn to feel your energy and that's something very important to me as a reiki master is teaching people how to heal themselves i'm not here to try and heal someone and have them keep coming back my goal is to heal them and have them to continue healing themselves so when when I do this, now everyone will have a, a different experience. So if you ever take two magnets, right, with opposite poles, you can feel, you know, you can feel it, but you cannot see it. It's the same thing with energy. Like our thoughts are real, but we can't see our thoughts right now, but they exist. Same thing if we're on, we're on a cell phone. At what works, we're all conversating right now. There's no physical connection, but how are we talking? vibrations, frequencies. So we can use our own frequency, our own energy to feel other energies. So that's one thing that I do too, is like, I'll put my hands over the crystals, or even if you're, you're looking at it, see how, pay attention to how your body feels when you're looking at that crystal, like pay attention to you know, different sensations that you may have. And another thing I like to mention too, is that you, there's people, you can have experiences that might feel not so good when you're using crystals too, because you're healing things. And, and when you're healing things, there's things that need to come out, you know? So it's, it's doesn't always make you feel great right away. You might even have a, a headache, you know, and then mm -hmm. you, you should pay attention to yourself when you're wearing crystals, like I'll be on right now, I'm, I'm buzzing and overwhelmed. Like if you guys could see, I'll show you guys my table. Like I have tons of crystals all around me. This one just keeps calling to me. So I, I need to give it some love right now. This I think is so beautiful. This is called Oconite. Beautiful. It's so interesting. It's like these little tiny hairs that almost looks like cotton or a marshmallow it's just amazing and it just keeps speaking to me so i just wanted to acknowledge that i always um, tell people i always you know when i explain crystals i always explain it that you don't choose the crystal the crystal chooses you 
And yes. it's, you know, you, you, depending on what you pick up or how you, you hold it is how it's going to resonate back to you. And, you know, I've had crystals that, you know, don't pick me or don't resonate with me and they'll burn my hands or I'll feel burning in my hands. So for yes. me, it's like I know immediately what I'm supposed to kind of have and what I'm not supposed to have. But you talked about uh, certain crystals that don't feel good. And one that I really, really emphasize for people that they should be using for small periods of time is a tektite moldavite. And there's different desert glasses. There's, you know, glass, there's different types. But that is a purging stone. And I try to explain to people, like, certain rocks and stones you should not be utilizing for long periods of time because it could make you sick. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Moldavite is is powerful. Columbianite, too, is one of my favorites. It's also mm -hmm. another um, tectite. Actually, I have these right here. I love, um, is it? Let's see. And like, here's, you know, the different authenticity. Right. I'm, I'm very, um, you know, very particular about making sure I would never ever want to give anything to anybody I and plus I've done so much I've been working with stones so long although I'm not like a gemologist which is something that I would like to do I have different tools and lights and things like that but I can feel you can also like there's different things you can do you can like put it to your teeth eventually you you know when something's not real and you won't feel the energy from something that's not real the same way you will. So like here, yeah, this one is very cool. This is a meteorite. Yeah. And this is Libyan glass. This is also like a little meteorite. There's different kinds of meteorites, which I find very intriguing and interesting as well. Tektites and Moldavite is definitely very powerful and amazing. But very rare. Tektites are very rare, I know. But it's also something like, you know, I try to emphasize to people, and you can definitely, you I mean, you know better than me, be careful what you purchase. Be careful. There's a lot of fakes out there. If you're going to find, a, you know, something that's worth a lot of money, such as a Tektite, Moldavite, even the Desert Glass, it's certain things are worth more money. And if you think you're getting a super crazy deal, you're probably getting a fake and somebody is capitalizing on the, on, you know, the, the fakeness of that stone. So sometimes right. it doesn't cost a little bit more money, but you are buying authenticity and, and you had, had the cards with you. Like, it's very important. I mean, you know, with Moldavite, any, any type of desert glass, you, you know, even certain types of obsidian um, or lightning glass, you have to look with a loop or a, um, a magnifying to even know that it's real. It's not something that you can just go, right. oh, here it's real because the, the, the fakes are so good these days. Yes, and, and the way that they simulate them too. Like mm -hmm. you have fakes and then you also have like lab created, which yeah. looks even more real than, than the simulated ones. But um, well, look at this, look at everybody, this, this selenite, um, uh, citrine, 90% of the citrine you buy in stores has been heated and is not authentic. It, I mean, it's not been naturally heated to, to where it's supposed to be a naturally sourced. They actually take amethyst, they heat it up, and they sell it as citrine. So, yes. you know, it goes to show you don't know what you're buying unless you do your research, right? Right. You know, it's one thing that I am struggling with. I, a lot of people, I think, are nervous because my prices are so low. Um, and because my stones are real, that's something that I kind of have to figure out what to do. I mean, there's times where I lose money on sales be because I want to make sure everyone can afford it. And all my friends and everyone keep telling me that I need to raise my prices. So I've been trying to a little bit, but I just want to make sure that everybody can afford to be healed. So that's my goal. And also, if there is anybody watching that does go on my sites, and is interested in something and they cannot afford it, you can message me and I will find a way to make sure that you get it. Absolutely. Yes. Well, guys, I'm trying to go through a little bit. Uh, got so your, Melissa, yeah, so your Melissa report. says, while you're looking, Richard, I can I can do the question. Melissa uh, Grubb says, could Reiki help me? So maybe, uh, Michelle, explain, I mean, how do you source somebody's injury or problem? Right. And how do you go about healing it? Okay, so one, let me start by this. Um, so one day, I, my, my son had a lump on his foot. I took him to the emergency room. 
and we're sitting there and it was complete chaos. Uh, there was people screaming. There was someone who walked in with literally blood coming out of their eyes, their stomach, like it looks oh. like a complete murder scene like it was chaos in there and I looked at my son I said oh my god I said I need to heal these people mind you a lot of people get confused you do not have to believe in Reiki for it to work for you now for it to for you to continue to stay healed you would have to apply it and raise your frequency but as far as like an, an initial me being able to heal someone within i would say a half hour it went from screaming chaos and blood to complete calmness and quiet in the um, emergency room and a lot of people don't realize either that almost every hospital in the united states has a reiki master on staff and will never tell you this because they don't want you to be healed um so i'm, I'm saying this to say we got into the room and the doctor comes in and he goes to check my son's foot. And of course the lump is completely gone. And my son looks at me and he goes, mom, he goes, we came here just so you can heal all these people. And I was like, you're right. Like it was amazing. And, and we ended up not having to, there was nothing there anymore. Um, but just to explain to people that you don't have to, these people had no idea that I was sitting there healing them and, and working on them. And again, I, I won't just say me either. I'm channeling a higher energy through me, which which is very important for me to explain. Because if I was to use my own energy, I'd be completely drained and would not be able to do the work or heal as many people as I do. Okay. <clears throat> so, Alfred, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Alfred said, does Reiki teach about chakras? That's a good question. So um, everything is connected. Again, like um, for me, like, chakras is, again, another word to explain um, what you could possibly use other words for. Um, the different energy channels could be chakras. Um, so it's like society has created these different words and ideas, but it's really, really all connected and all the same thing. It's, it's all the same. So yes, in, in that sense, Reiki is absolutely about clearing and balancing your chakras. And, and one thing I will say too is, so when I am doing a healing on somebody, um, I, I make sure I meditate and I clear myself completely before I do Reiki. Um, I kind of scan um, the person it is the best way I can describe it with my energy. I can feel and see where there's blocks. So that's how I know where I'm going to do my healing. And, and that could be in different chakras and different areas, which I'll move the energy out and bring the healing or white light or love, whatever you want to call it in. Okay, so if somebody comes in, somebody comes to you and they want to, they want you to heal them. What physical process is it that you take them through? So how how does how does a Reiki healing work for you? For me, um, so I would say everybody's completely different. Like my number one thing is to educate um, and make sure that whoever I'm working with is completely comfortable. That's number one. Um, I usually have, it's like a massage table um, that I have out. Now, there's some people, I, again, it's depending on the person, the situation, what they need healed. Maybe we want to be outside in the grass, maybe to feel grounded, or it, it, it can be different for different situations. But typically in a Reiki session, not, not saying mine, but just in a Reiki okay. session in general, most people do have a massage table. Um, where you may have oil burning, different uh, aromatherapies and, and candles, like setting the atmosphere in a very peaceful and just cleansing environment. Um, there's also um, sage, for instance, or polysanto. Like there's different things that, that you can include. Um, and usually, so like I'll start my sessions by doing like a, a, a small guided meditation to help 
my client um, relax and just getting them to a place where they can clear their mind and be so that their body and their spirit and their mind can be ready to accept the unconditional love or Reiki or whatever you like to call it that they're getting ready to receive. Um, and then there's also times where I'll show you these I absolutely love. So these are called tuning forks. But people are not familiar. It's also like a musical instrument. So there's there's all different ones and different, um, like this one says solar plexus and it gives you the vibration 126.22. Now, so they'll say this is for solar plexus, right? But if I sense that an individual may need this on their third eye, then it's gonna go on their third eye. Like I personally, I don't stick to what is told for me to do as a Reiki master. So my perception and my way of doing things may be completely different to somebody else. And I would just suggest that whoever you're going to, that you feel comfortable and safe with them. Okay. Now, Ellen said, it makes me think when you all describe vibrations, when I'm going to have a relapse, I know because of the funky vibrations going through me, she is MS. Um, uh, I'm going to have to check out your Etsy since you're from up yonder. But yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> we talk quite often on a show about vibrations and and how to get energy transfers. And I think what we need to look at, my opinion is, for whatever it's worth, is I call it the two cent trucker opinion. Um, what I what I would think in that situation in particular, uh, Ellen, is that when your body has something that goes on neurologically and it, it's still an energy spark it also is a misfire it and again that's why they have now a really big thing down here in the south is salt tubs where you could just lay out in salt water dense salt water chill and people come out of there feeling like a million bucks but your body will send signals from your brain and your impulses and your body reacts to that. That's what goes on with, you know, unfortunately your situation and others. But it's kind of one and the same if you think about it, because when I've gotten vibrations or or you can feel a vibrational energy off of someone or off of something, you can tell if it's low or high. You can tell how intense it is. And you also get a good sense with whether or not if you want to muck with it or not. And yeah, there are times that I went, no, my number is no, my name is no, and just move on. That's just the way it looks. But yeah, you've got to be careful all of that kind of stuff. It's kind of crazy. I think you know why I, I tell people to kind of uh, how to do a self test is when you, uh, you know, think of a, uh, of a song that you want to listen to. Yeah, is it a cool. sad song? Is it a happy song? Is it an angry song? What song do you have in your head? Because sad songs don't bring you high vibrations and happy songs, fast beat dance songs don't bring you anger and so on. And so if you're going to that like slow mix where you feel depressed, you know, I hate life, you're probably in a low vibration state. And, and the, you know, one of the, the quickest ways to heighten the vibration is put a happy song on and dance it out. So it's really about a self-assessing what your vibration is at the moment and then you utilize a specific crystal if you if you're needing to self-heal to try to heighten that vibration right am i right yeah, Michelle? Or just, yeah or simply literally smile when you smile mm -hmm. it actually changes the chemicals in your brain mm -hmm. it's all about retraining the brain um i this actually reminded me of something i wanted to share so babies are born with two fears does I'm curious if anyone has any guesses or knows what those two fears are. Because if they're only born with two fears, that means everything else we fear is self-taught or, or society taught. So I'm curious if anybody knows what two fears are we born with as in the a chat. human? Yeah. See what they say in the chat. And while we're waiting on answers from folks, let's pick up another question. Herbie said, is the belief slash faith in the power of the stone more important or is the stone? 
Okay. Well, this, let me make this very, this again, let me make this very clear. Everything is energy, right? So the table's energy, the stone is energy. My, our thoughts are energy. Our hair is energy. So everything's just different forms of energy that is going to change form. So energy can't be destroyed. It can only change form. So nobody needs anything to heal themselves except for what's already within themselves. I always tell people, this is these stones, they're not going to heal you. They will assist in your healing process. They will help raise your vibrations. Um, again, whether you believe it or not, um, it's it, it just is what it is. It's it's energy, just like there's energies that affect things and, and there's nothing we have to respect and appreciate what those energies are because I always tell people if we didn't know good, we wouldn't know what bad is. If we didn't know what bad is, we wouldn't know what good is. Um, something else I found really interesting, I did with a group of women, I used to work in a homeless shelter. Um, we took, we did this rice experiment and all you guys can try it at home so that you can actually see and witness and experience energy with your own eyes. So you put rice in three separate jars cooked white rice and one of the containers you're going to write positive words every day you're going to tell you love it and hug it and and all these good things and then one of the jars you're going to put somewhere completely forget about it ignore it don't touch it don't look at it don't nothing that the third one put negative stuff if you're frustrated go talk to the to the rice all these things and you will literally see the negative one will have mold all over it the ignored one will have a little bit of mold and the positive one, most likely none at all. And this was all cooked at the same time. And every time that I've done this experiment, it's been successful and it, and it helps people really understand. And what it's about is water. Water responds to energy. Uh, there's a book called Hidden Messages um, <clears throat> where he, free, he takes the water and he exposes it to different environments, different frequencies, different energies, different words. And he takes pictures of this frozen water and you can literally see how it's responding. So if we're made of water and water can, can respond to energy like that, can you imagine how a human responds to energy? I just, I find it amazing. I, I will tell you just a brief note on that. I have done a lot of residential cleansings and what I typically do as well as I normally charge the water I use salt water with white light, right? And I had this guy that was a homeowner. He's like, oh, that's all, you know, whatever, you know. So, okay. So I took out two bottles of water and I charged one, didn't charge the other. Put them in the freezer. Wait until the investigation was over a few hours later. Of course, they were both frozen. The one I clarified was like a sheet of glass. The one that wasn't clarified was shattered inside the bottle and broken. And that was just, for me, that was proof positive that you can do that. And I do do that. I do charge every bottle of salt water with white light before I cleanse the home. People just don't understand the power of that energy. Uh, now, Alfred, again, a, a good friend and a great fan of the show, said, Michelle, you have a pure heart, and I can feel that from here. Oh, thank you. I love you guys. I think he's going to look He's gonna look for a check if you keep it up, I'm just saying. So some of the people had, had put some answers up yeah. for the two fears of babies. One put up, let's all read them through. So Stephanie says, baby has got to eat and not be alone. Jane says, food and being abandoned. Brian says, fear of not being touched and eating. Uh, Carmen says, falling in loud noises. So, ding, ding, ding. That's, who said that last one? Fear and loud noises. That was who was that? Uh, Carmen, I believe. Yes, Carmen yeah, Mathis. Carmen. Yeah, they're Carmen's correct. one of our Carmen's one of my uh, investigative team members as well. She's awesome. a lady that has some pretty strong abilities too. So, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I found that amazing, and no, that, that's like proven psychology um and i just find that absolutely amazing that 
loud noises and falling. So that means every other little thing that we worry and we stress about. And, you know, I, I, I tell people it's everything. It's very simple. It's love or fear. And we just have to pay attention to our thoughts and our actions and make sure they're aligning with love. Yeah. Now, Brian Bowden, first of all, buddy, damn good to see you. Um, he reaches out and says, Michelle, will you be at the Battlefield Bash in Gettysburg this July? I know, but I'll look into it and try and be there. Brian, I'll be. I, you didn't ask me if I'm going to be there, but I'm going to be there. Yay. Thanks, Lord. Um, I will what be is there. That? It is a, a conference um, of like-minded individuals who uh, gather together and, you know, talk about their wares. They have a table. You get a table and chairs, and people come to you, and they, you know, it's like going to any other show, pretty much, conference or show. Um, but they're going to be done. On the, it's going to be done on the Gettysburg battlefield. Oh, that's awesome. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I'll definitely try to make it. I'll try to get you the information if you want about it. I know. Um, oh, I love that. Just yeah. to give you guys kind of different ideas. This is yellow Lumerian quartz, which I find amazing. I like it. I like it. Um, so there you go, Brian. Thanks for asking me if I'm going to be there, bro. Thank you. Um, okay, so... Herbie says, is Reiki a spiritual art or a supernatural form? It sounds to me like a mystical form of healing. It's however you perceive it to be, to be honest with you. Um, because it's your, it's your experience. It's how you, however you're perceiving it is how you will experience it. I am not here to say like, this is it and this is what works and this is what you should believe i'm just here to share my personal experiences in life um, and hope to inspire and and heal other people but i wouldn't I, again mm -hmm. like that goes back to i know it's i might be sounding repetitive but like even the word mystical or like these mm -hmm. words have these certain concepts and perceptions that go along with it so i i i kind of just try to just be that love you know yeah. i really don't have words to um i just yeah. i i want people to feel good like i just whatever i can do i literally i go into stores and look for people to help like i would rather do that than go shopping like i don't enjoy shopping like i just like yeah. helping people and i don't think it's mystical or anything i think it's it's what all human beings should be doing you know what's, Michelle, what's I love, natural I yeah, I love the way that you uh, word that because Richard and I have talked about it a million times. I'm an energy worker too. I'm an access bars of consciousness practitioner. I have my Reiki, I do uh, uh, TT and all of that stuff. But um, one thing that I really emphasize to a lot of our people, and I gain flack for it, but I emphasize it, is that Reiki is a consumer worm. It's a word. It's it's a it's a name. It's a phrase. And I go uh -huh. back to the, to the topic of Kleenex. Everybody says when I ask them what they blow their nose with, they say Kleenex. But really, it's tissue because Kleenex is a brand, and so is Reiki. So I love the fact that you can remove yourself from that brand, consider it energy work, utilize your own, create your own you know method of it, and and go for it from there. That's the true authentic uh, way of doing it. Um, I don't, I, I have a real hard time when people are stuck when you have, you know, they talk about the attunement symbols and they talk about, well, now here's the next step and the next step. It, the same yeah. goes for psychic and mediumship readings. If I had a nickel for every time someone said, Katie, can you teach a class on step-by-step -step on how to become a psychic? It's like, you can't. Everybody downloads information differently. Everybody tries to utilize the energy differently. So to, for, it would be ignorant for me to assume that you're going to, to be able to do it the same way I can. I can certainly guide you on that path, but everybody kind of, you know, I think that taking those courses are fantastic. I do not tell people not to do it. I would encourage you to take a course if you want to, but just take what you need out of it and develop your own language. You know, every painter has their signature type of painting that they do that identifies them as a painter or as a singer or as, you know, whatever it is. And I think that as energy workers, we all have our own signature as well. Another thing too, and maybe you can kind of shed a little light on this. 
I've had clients come to me and say to me, you know, I didn't like the last Reiki master or I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't get anything out of it. I didn't, that particular, that's like a crystal that may not resonate with you. You may have to go to a second opinion, go to a second clientele, you know, go somewhere else to resonate with that energy worker that you are working with. Uh, you know, how, would you agree with that or how do you feel about that? I totally agree. And uh, you know, one thing too, is just because I'm a nice, loving, kind, giving person, not every, that doesn't mean I'm good for everybody. There's some right. people that are not ready for my energy who may be offended or feel uncomfortable um, by the amount of uh, energy or unconditional love that, that I have. So you're absolutely right. Just because somebody doesn't resonate with you doesn't mean that they're good or not good. Different vibrations are better with different vibrations. And that, that's completely okay. But one person may be bad for someone and, and may be like an absolute blessing to somebody else. It's And it's again, too, like we, we are images and reflections, too. So we have to look at maybe why, you know, why didn't that resonate too? Because it may be something within us that we need to, to look at too and to find, figure that out. Now, you know, it's funny because we, 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 Katie and I have often talked about, um, you know, energy within teams, for example, if you go to investigate with people, if the energies don't blend, they don't gel, they don't jive, it'll kill your entire investigation that's nothing but energy right so that I means i find that very interesting you say that now herbie said my mother would take an egg and place it in the closet i've never heard of this sometimes she would use an onion and put it into the corner of her room and then after a couple of days she would get rid of it absorbing energy well some things are absorbance and some things are projected right so it's it's really a, about how you're cleansing that area all right, so Alfred, Michelle, has asked me to ask you to say the word coffee. Coffee. How do I say it? Where am I from now? Coffee. I'd like a cup of coffee. What about coffee. purse? Just give me coffee. Yeah. My mom used to say puss. You the what? Purse. Oh, okay. Want to make sure we're keeping this PG. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's funny. Uh, all right, Alfred, you're done now. Behave yourself. Um, uh, Ryan, another hey. thing I, I want to just mention, too, um, you don't have to touch anyone or physically be in front of somebody to do Reiki. That's also, and I realized that when I took somebody out of a coma in another state, uh, and I had, that that was mind-boggling. There's a lot of things that I've um, experienced um, healing people that, I don't understand, you know, that it's just mind boggling, you know, so the human mind can only comprehend so much. So we, as humans, like we want to understand and know everything, but it's okay if you don't too. Yeah. Of course, we're always learning. That's the best part about it. Brian, right. oh, Brian, stop. Brian says, I know you'll be there, Richard. I'm looking forward to meeting you again without the New York City Police Department uniform once again. Somewhere, did I write you a ticket? Did I, did I arrest you or something, Brian? I need to kind of know because I, <laughs> I, I, I think it was a ticket, wasn't it? Talk to me about that, buddy. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, Michelle, can you, can you kind of give us a quick run? No, not quick, as long as you think necessary, but of the go-to stones that you think everybody should have. Well, you know, whether you're a paranormal investigator, whether you're living right. at home, working, you know, whatever it is, what would you say everybody needs to have in their home? Sure. Okay. Like based on like my, I'm not going to think about it just based on my intuition. The first thing that comes to me is clear quartz. I absolutely love, love, love clear quartz. And the cool thing about it, it doesn't absorb um, negative energies. You can actually use other stones to, to cleanse with it as the same thing with the uh, selenite um, is also awesome because it doesn't absorb um, certain energies. I love, um, Tourmaline is an amazing, amazing stone for grounding. Um, amethyst, I think, is also just super high vibrational. Super 7 is one of my absolute favorites. Here's a really cool looking Super 7. 
which has seven stones in one. Um, I also find this one is also very cool. I love Oralite 23. This has 23 stones in one. Wow. That's cool. I love that it. That is really cool. So, I mean, those are just a couple of my suggestions. But again, you should go with whatever you feel drawn to or whatever you feel. You know, if you would ask me this a month ago, I might have said, you know, completely different stones. So depending on the, the moment and and the need, it, it, my answers can absolutely change. But I clear quartz is like my go to. I love clear quartz. Yeah. Uh, Latoya Pearson, uh, Michelle says, I absolutely love you, Michelle. I love you and I love everybody out there. Now, again, some people are talking about the onion thing because onion collects bad energy. Brian brings it up and collects energy and diseases from the location that are placed. This yeah. is why you should only consume a fresh cut onion. Wow. So, Michelle, maybe we'll ask. Um, you know, in terms of having your crystals, everybody knows that, you know, once you, you utilize them for quite a period of time, sometimes they will start to resonate and pick up that energy. How would you go about cleansing your crystals and how would you go about recharging your crystals? What's a really good way of doing that? Sure, absolutely. So like each different crystal will speak to me differently. And that's also how I wrap them. I literally follow their directions. Um, and it's the same thing goes for me personally for cleansing. Um, it maybe I know it might sound crazy, but sometimes they want to go hang out in the sun. Sometimes they want to be in the moon. Like I will also, in a sense, ask them how they want to be cleansed. Sometimes they want to go hang out with their, their other little crystal friends and I'll put them together. Maybe it'll be in a bowl of Himalayan salt. Um, dry salt especially if it's uh some there's some crystals that can you know start disintegrating and losing there's also i've also seen crystals grow structures in them from me wearing them with my energy which i thought was really freaking cool i never yeah, seen anything i've like had the that. same thing yep yeah and i wasn't really into crystals then so i was like went back to the store i'm like is this possible and they were like oh we've never seen anything like that and i'm like I was took pictures like I kept taking pictures like it was absolutely I was like not losing my mind. It was rutilated quartz, yeah, which was cool. The rutilated the they, they became so rutilated over time. Um, but what was the question again? Just what's the best way to cleanse and recharge your crystals? Oh right, right, yeah. So I would say it depends on the crystal and um, and what I sense that that it needs and in the way that it needs it, just like us, you know, maybe we need to cleanse because we need to stop talking to certain people or maybe we need to stop eating certain things. So to me, I kind of like see us like as crystals, like it might depend on the time and the situation of what kind of cleansing it may need. Now, Ellen asks, when you're in need of healing, can you apply your gift of yourself or do you have to go to someone else? When, well, I can tell you this, no matter what is going on with me, I'm still always able to heal people, uh, which, uh, well, you know, her question I, is when you, if you needed something, if I need healing. It's uh, a good question. This is something that I'm still working on. Um, well, I know that when I, I know that when I need, I, I don't trust many people. My trust right. circle is the size of a Cheerio. So that lady that's next to you is the person who, I, if I need a reading, I go to. Right. I trust her. That's the way it works. And if she needs right. something for me and I can do it, I will do it. She knows that too. But, you know, in the, in the realm of psychic mediumship, you really can't do anything for yourself. So I actually thought that was a pretty good question. With Reiki. Yeah, I would say um, I do go see my Reiki master. Um, nature is my healer. My bird and my toads are my healers. My kids and, and stones. Um, so that's what I would say. I don't necessarily feel like I specifically need to go to somebody, but also helping people is very healing for me as well. Well, Reiki is something that you are healing through yourself as well as healing others, right? So you're taking the universal consciousness, you're bringing it in, you're, you're, right. you're kind of 
tapping in, you're you're concentrating it and you're focusing it on somebody else. So it's not just right. you as the, as the person, it's that energy flowing through you as a conduit. So there's a little bit of healing in there too, as you're assisting other people absolutely. with this kind of need. A hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for mentioning that. That's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, we're having, you know, we're having that a healing moment and experience together and we're, we're, we're channeling it through us to those persons. So absolutely, it's clearing us as well, um, which is again, why I do do a meditation and a cleansing and a clearing before I do do work on anybody. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. Now, Ellen said, what about should night? Okay. Uh, I've got a place around my electronics. Oh. Oh, Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is Shanghai Sorry, right Shanghai. here. This is in the raw form. Um, and this is in a tumbled form. You can actually, it actually clear, cleanses water as well. I have not gotten into it too much, but I did buy some and I'm really curious to try it. Um, you can charge your water with it. Um, yeah, Shanghai is, it's, it's amazing. It, it breaks down the electromagnetic field, so it stops in high levels of EMF of affecting your vibration, especially in your throat chakras, for sure. Right, and this and I find when it's done, like I have a piece I use as an example, so I used it a lot, and when it when it when it when I when it was done, it broke apart. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, right? that will happen. So too. yeah, yeah. This also too is amazing. This is called um, Organite. Oh, beautiful. Um, I think that there's another name for it too. I can't think of it right now. But it's there's a certain combination <laughs> of different materials. Some are organic and inorganic. And the combination of these, um, you can do some research on it, but it has shown to actually stop lightning. Um, ones that are big enough, it can stop that much uh, radio frequency. So I... Um, I actually did like a test with this and some aluminum foil around my phone one time and I completely had no service at all. Like it completely stopped all the radio frequencies. So I've done like a little experiment with my for myself and thought that was super cool. Well, I'm going to bring up the last question of the night because we need to start breaking down the end of the show since we've blown through an hour and a half almost. Great. Um, is there a stone, Herbie asked, is there a stone to help increase your spiritual awareness? In other words, help you recharge yourself. That would be the last My question. My answer is always, is always going to be what resonates with you. What comes to mind for me um, when I think of that is kyanite is like very helps me connect with like my spiritual my higher self or like the spiritual realm or or what people call angels or different um entities and things like that so kyanite i love 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 and again it depends on the day and depends on maybe what kind of connection that you want to reach in that type of uh place too so i would just always go based on your intuition don't don't ever let a book or someone or something tell you what is going to be best for you. All right. Appreciate it. Michelle, we appreciate having you on the show tonight. We, we really do. Yeah. I know our audience loved having you on here and throwing uh, questions at you and getting answers and everything. But tell us, you know, how does somebody get a hold of you? If they want to, like, what's the, where's your store at? And how do people get a hold of you regarding Ray K stuff? Sure. So you can go to Etsy or eBay um, and look up Hearts of Healing Gifts. I'm also on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, you can call me anytime. My number is 908-227-5708. I'm happy to help anybody. If there's, again, if there's something I don't know or if, there, if I can't help you, I'll, I'll find someone or something that can. So. Well, I'm I'll, so, I'll I'm so grateful. Call you at 545 in the morning, okay? Listen, I'm here. I don't, I did I don't that put time. I butt dialed her by accident. It was like 545 in the morning. And she was so <laughs> sweet about it. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Uh, but guys, <laughs> that's going to be the end of it. Uh, we are at uh, five minutes to close. Again, um, the, the, the tour coming up next Saturday. 
Octagon Hall. This is a, a, a tour that we are not going to repeat too often. The distance is extreme, but my God, is it worth it? Three tickets are left, just three. Um, it is a five and a half, almost six hour uh, exploration into one of the most active buildings. I mean, we're talking the spirits move mannequins around for you and all kinds of good stuff. Um, but yeah, you need to come on out. There's uh, no restrictions on it other than limit because we like to kind of keep the contamination down to a certain point. But there's three fours. Uh, again, there is a slave's graveyard. There is the grounds themselves that are always active as well. EVPs, EMF work, everything. There's this not. Our son was in a dining room and actually had a translucent arm reach out and grab it. Good Lord. And uh, great stuff. Yeah. You need to come on out. Don't miss it. Uh, Katie is, damn it. And, uh, you know, it'll be all right. One day we'll get her out. But, guys, that one's coming up. Six days left to that tour, and we're done with it. And then there is a new one coming up April 1st at the Walking Horse Hotel in Ward Trace, Tennessee. It is called The Last Ride because it will be the last paranormal event they will ever have in this building. Ever. The Last Ride, the Walking Horse Hotel. Again, 6 p. to 1130-ish. I never end them on time, so it doesn't really matter. But I, I'm telling you, there's guaranteed activity. I don't, I rarely ever do that. But I have experienced these two buildings over the last 10 years of my career. I have experienced these two buildings, and I have never, ever been disappointed by either two. The one um, is actually where my wife um, got jumped on the third floor. So... Yeah, uh, it's it's an active building. Um, you know, it's it's and at that point we're also asking that everybody be over the age of eighteen. And I will scope out each and every one of you on the way out the building to make sure you aren't bringing home a little something, something. That's scary. You need to take care of that if that's the case. So, you know, if I pull you over to the side and tour, and I go, hey, uh, you might want to come outside and see me with some Palo Santo and some sage. Come on when in. is that tour happening? What's that? When is that tour happening? Uh, the one I got coming up this Saturday uh, is in uh, Franklin, Kentucky. It's right near Louisville, not too far from Louisville. Uh, that's happening this Saturday from 6 p. to 11.30 p. Um, or so. And then well, April gonna, 1st. I, I'm going to send some jewelry for, so that you can give away at that event. Wow, look at you. Yeah. That is really generous. We really appreciate that. See, if you don't get the last three tickets, you don't get a shot. So I'm going to tell you, as you can see, I'm a believer. So, man, that's really that's really generous of you, Michelle. We really, I'm really happy to help. That, we really appreciate that a lot. some extra protection for you guys. Amazing. Uh, so what have you got coming up? Do you have any events coming up or anything? I have no events coming up. Just lots of love to give and, and happy to well, help gonna, We're going to be looking into the Gettysburg Bash. Correct? Yes, actually, yeah, message me about that if you can. Yeah. Um, see what I can. Especially Brian. Brian, if you don't behave yourself, I'm going to write you another ticket. Anyway, um, it's the way it works. But we, we have sincerely appreciated you being out, giving your time and your information and showing your love for what you do. It's really appreciated. Uh, yeah, and, thank and you many, so anyway. much for being here. Yeah. Thank and you guys, guys for being here. You. Yes. What's that? I said thank you both for being you. Like you guys are thank so you. amazing. Oh, by the way, you guys never met, but you have met many times. By the way, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, know. we know we've covered that background a few times, haven't we, Katie? Right. Yes, um, for sure. Yeah, but guys, we appreciate you coming out, showing up. You know, getting a chance to to see a, a wonderful person doing a wonderful thing. Again, she's giving you the information. If you need it again, reach out to me uh, or reach out to Katie. We'll get you the information and the link. Um, I am here to tell you and in, in all transparency, she's very, very affordable on the right authentic stuff. 
and uh, you know, all day long, all day long. So guys, take care of yourselves, and we will catch you on the other side of things um, next week. So hang tough. Michelle, Katie, hang on a minute. We're going to go and say goodnight. Everyone be kind to yourself and others. <laughs>